superhuman. All right? The rulers mentioned are cosmocrator, a Greek word there, but the Jews called that the angel of death. So we are fighting against demonic spirits is what we're fighting against. The thing is, though, I think that day that Paul spoke of right here, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now that might be also each day that we go through as we go along. No doubt when you look at what Paul writes here, it seems to more imply that as well. But I also am very concerned that it may apply to a future time because truly we are living in the most evil and wickedest day that we have ever lived in in all of humanity. All right. Now, let's take a look at something here that Pope Benedict uh, made a statement on back in on April 1st of 2014. It was actually published there uh, on the World News Daily Report. By the way, I will have links to the different uh, articles that I've used in putting this together in the description below. It says, former Pope warns of Vatican alien agenda. Former Pope Benedict XVI spread uh, consternation in the Catholic world this morning as he claimed that a group of Jesuits had infiltrated the Vatican and were pursuing what he called an alien agenda. Well, the only Jesuit that I know that infiltrated the Vatican is none other than Pope Francis. You know, Bergoglio, as they call him. In a press conference rebroadcast live on FM German Catholic radio station, Radio Horeb, the first pope to retire from his position in 598 years, expressed his feelings of deception as a sinister group of members of the Vatican are pushing on for the search of extraterrestrial life through their Lucifer II large binocular telescope based at Vatican Observatory on Mount Graham in Tucson, Arizona, Tucson uh, which it's actually Arizona, US, in the USA. And he's right. They are on a quest for alien life. And this Lucifer telescope, by the way, if you ever do a little bit of research on this, this actually went up back during the time when uh, Ronald Reagan was president and when there came out this information about this incoming planet called Nibiru or Planet X. And I think it plays a part into this. But let me kind of, let me share with you what really kind of got me going on this quest and this search here. And that was what I shared with you the other day about the name of Yeshua. You know, I was looking at how God, his, uh, how he has, um, his name, we might say, has evolved. All right. Uh, as far as when we look in the Bible and we see where God first tells Moses, he's Ihaye. Later, he says, I was not known by my name. You know, Yahweh has different interpretations for what that might be, etc. And there's all kinds of thoughts and ideas about that. But I do want to share with you a couple of things about that. First, let's just look at the scripture where this comes from. The first mention of a question to God by Moses about God's name. It says right here in the Hebrew, in uh, the 14th uh, verse there, uh, Exodus chapter 3, by the way, for those of you that are following, um, it'd be Gimel in Hebrew. Anyway, Yod Dalet, which is uh, verse 14, Ve'yomer Elohim el Moshe, and God says unto Moses, I'm just translating without looking over for a quick, just my own way of doing it. Ihaye asha ihaye. I am which I am, or I, or, or I will be that which I will be. All right? Ve'yomer kol livne Yisrael. All right? He says, you can say to the children of Israel, Ihaye shalachani eliachem. Ihaye will be has sent me unto you. Now, we normally translate this as I am. But technically, it really means will be. Now, that I used to look at this, and I've looked at this from a prophetic aspect, that it's showing the coming of Yeshua, uh, etc. But as I've really been breaking down in a word study here, I have really become to the conclusion that perhaps the will be is that the, all, the, the eternal Father willed himself into being which does include Yeshua becoming a human being. Now, most people would say that God cannot become a man. That's what our Jewish brothers say. But that's not true, because if that were true, then we would have to deny the very Tanakh that we read. 
all right? Because God can become a man. He can do anything he so desires. But in this case here, he tells Moses, you can tell them that Ihaye uh, has sent me unto you, all right? Now, then I begin to think then, if Ihaye is how we would look at the name that God originally gave Moses to give to the world, because in, in reality, how would you give God a name? God would have to give himself a name because there is no one there to name the eternal existing father of all. You know, our God, as we say in English. But even God is not a good way. We have all kinds of gods, and believe me, the Vatican has plenty of them. He has Zeus and Apollos that they worship, which kind of lets me, makes me wonder who they really take to be Jesus or Yeshua. I don't think it's the Yeshua that we know either. And that's my whole point in this message tonight. But anyway, I began to play around though with, uh, with looking at this from a word study because of the Father God being called Ihaye is what we have our first account in the biblical reference, which is I am or will be. He wills himself into being. All right, so I looked at what the Greeks say as Jesus. In Hebrew, we call it Yeshua. And Yeshua, though, by the way, just means salvation. It is a common, everyday Hebrew word. And in fact, most Jews, when they hear Yeshua, if you were to say Yeshua, they just think you're saying salvation. Now, some actually think that, it's, that Yeshua, they say, it, some say it means Yah is salvation. And that's why some will say, well, we should pronounce it Yeshua or Yahushua, because of the name of Joshua. It's derived similar from the name of Joshua. But I am wondering if that's not that may not be correct either. So I looked at this, and I thought about, but, but I think my idea was that it's actually his name is derived from Ihaye, will be. As we see in, for example, in Hebrews 13.8, he says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. All right? That is Yehaye. He, he is existing. He's always the same. He never changes. That is, that is expressing, the, you know, even though he's the son of God, it still expresses who the father is through him. All right. So, so anyway, the self-existing one willed himself into being. So perhaps Yeshua is, I am salvation. And that's what I begin to look at, that he is salvation. And if you take and you were to write out, I am salvation, or, you know, am salvation, it would actually be Yeshui, as you can see right here at the top here. Yeshui, all right? I am salvation would be Yeshui, right? As I did my research and I discovered that the Catholic Church had stolen this very name. This is what really got me. You see, when I, I knew in Hebrew that we use the word Yeshua for the word salvation, but if the Father of Heaven had willed Himself into being so He could speak to Moses, then He would also will Himself into a man, into the womb of Mary. All right? So if He willed, you understand, if God can will Himself into being and can talk to Moses face to face or lip to ear, as the Bible says, then He can also will Himself inside of the womb of Mary and become the Son of God. And if that were to be the case, he's not just Yeshua, he's Yeshui, I am salvation. And when I looked at this, then I began to, do, I thought, wow, you know, and now I, of course, right here, this is the, I didn't use the vowel points here this way myself. I would have probably used a Segol there instead of the, uh, the, the, the vowel that they have there with the two dots underneath the Yod, Yeshui. It's still pronounced the same way, Yeshui, just like Ehaye. You notice the sound because of the vowel. The Aleph has no sound without a vowel. And the vowel in Ehaye is a Segol. So the same here, I believe it would be a Segol under the Yod, which would be Yeshui or Yeshua. That's why the people say it's Ye instead of Ya. All right, just a thought there. Anyway, so I did, as I did this from a word study, I thought, what would this, how, let me just double check. So I ran into Google Translate just to translate this out to see that it would translate, I am salvation. Because I know that's the right way. You take, you drop the hey at a yod, which is, which is where you get the word I or I am, Yeshua, 
Yeshua, salvation, I am your salvation. And when I did, this is what came up on Google Translate, Yeshua Jesuit. And I was blown away. I was blown away because the Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church had taken for this organization called the Jesuits, they had stolen the very identity of Yeshua and called themselves Jesuits. Yeshua. Their name literally means, I am salvation. Isn't it ironic that the very Pope that we have in Rome today is the first Jesuit the Catholic Church has ever put at the top ranking position of the Vatican and his title as Jesuit is also, I am salvation. All right, and so he is declaring that he is uh, the I am salvation to the entire world. Now, let's look at something else that's very important. In 1 John 2, 18, it says, Little children, it is the last time as you have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrist. All right? Whereby we know that it is the last time. So even all the way back during John's day, there were a lot of Antichrist. It says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So an antichrist, or the word antichrist coming from the Greek word antichristo, which is something that is like the Messiah, like the real deal, the real McCoy, as we would say. But he's not the real deal. And this is what we have with the Pope of Rome. See, they're trying to be like Christ, but they're not. And just like he says here, they went out from us because they weren't of us. All right? So they are professing Christianity. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is, is of the truth. Who is a liar? Watch this. But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is the Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Now, most people would stop right there and say, well, see, brother, he can't be the Antichrist. He can only be the false prophet because he doesn't deny that Jesus is the Christ. He doesn't deny the Father and the Son. Bear with me then. Bear with me. And by the way, I believe that every pope that has ever been has been an antichrist or the antichrist spirit. But now I realize their head demon is coming. That's going to be the antichrist that they want to rule here on the earth, a false messiah, a false Christ. All right, so just kind of bear with me as we go through this, guys. Now, I know many of you out there, you, you believe like people like, um, uh, you know, and I've got good friends that believe, for example, Obama is the Antichrist. And a lot of people say if Obama doesn't do something while he's still in office to stay in office, then it's going to be even stranger. Uh, I don't think that Obama is going to stay in office. Even if a war gets started, I still believe that more than likely that Donald Trump will get in. Because Donald Trump has vowed to protect the Catholic Church. And that's what Rome needs. They need a warrior that will protect them. Okay? You'll see why in just a moment. Now, Pope Francis says he would baptize aliens. Who are we to close doors? This was published on theindependent.co.uk, Tuesday, May 13th, 2014. Pope Francis has said that he would be willing to baptize aliens if they came to the Vatican asking, who are we to close the doors to anyone, even Martians? In a homily yesterday dedicated to the concepts of the acceptance and inclusion, Francis recalled a Bible story about the conversions of the first pagans to Christianity, according to reports on Vatican Radio. He said Catholicism was a church of open doors and that it was up to the Christians to accept the Holy Spirit, however unthinkable and unimaginable it appeared. Guys, you need to really let that one sink home. All right, let me just back up for a moment and remind you. See, the Antichrist is one that, that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, or Yeshua. He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. How would he deny him then? How can the Pope of Rome deny him when he says the name Jesus every day? 
It's easy. If he brings you another Jesus that's not the Jesus that you know of, that's not the Yeshua that was there 2,000 years ago that gave his life on Calvary so that when he died, his life could come back upon you as the believer. All right? So when a man starts stay, saying things here, he's ready to baptize aliens. You know, I do believe aliens exist. They're demons. They're demonic beings. You know, you guys got to remember... When, even when David was on the earth, David was fighting giants. The, the ten spies come back and said, we look like grasshoppers next to them. These, are, these were men that are part of the fallen angels, you know, that it cohabitated with the women that we read about even in the book of Enoch that writes it there. It's actually written in our own Bible as well. You know, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took into themselves women. Okay? I mean, come on, guys. That's fallen angels is what that is. And that's what Enoch speaks about. And so he's talking about that they don't close the doors, that it was up to Christians to accept the Holy Spirit, however unthinkable and unimaginable it appeared. This man's trying to prepare you. He's preparing your minds to accept an alien invasion is what I would call it. It's really a demonic invasion. The 200,000 demons bound in the river Euphrates. You know how they're playing around with CERN and all these things here? Something's about to happen. They're about to bring up these demons. But they're wanting you to think. So it's unthinkable and unimaginable. But, you know, people are just willing to believe anything this man says. They make him God. Right? So Pope Francis uh, he goes on, same article, describing how, according to the Bible, Peter was criticized by Christians of Jerusalem for making contact with the community of the unclean pagans. Francis said that at the time, that too was unthinkable. If, for example, tomorrow an expedition of Martians came to us here, one said, I want to be baptized, what would happen? Clarifying that he really was talking about aliens. The Pope said, Martians, right? Green with long nose and big ears like children's drawings. He's not playing around, friends. <clears throat> and let me tell you something. To, to give credence for what he is saying here, Gary Lowry, good friend of mine, that has shared with me of his own encounter of what happened to him, he said to me, he knew that they were demons. He said they tried to say that they were his brother and that they were repenting. They wanted to repent for what they had done, the evil that they had done in the cause of, uh, of the fall of Adam and Eve. Really? Pope's ready to baptize them. He's ready to take demons that God has cursed and to baptize those demons. Let's move on. Now, this is from the book called The Apocalypse of Thomas. It is an extra-biblical book. It is part of the Apocrypha. But I think it's noteworthy to read something here. And I don't say to, to use this as an absolute, but I think it's important because of a couple of things that are worded here that I wanted you to see in regards to the Antichrist and also in regards to the things that are happening in the world today. Watch what it says. And after that, again, a king shall arise in the south part of the world and shall hold rule a little space in whose days the treasuries shall fail because of the wages of the Roman soldiers so that the substance of all age shall be commanded to be taken and given to the king to distribute. Now, Pope Francis comes from the south part of the world, from Argentina. He becomes the, basically the king of the world, as it were, when he's the Pope of Rome. And the Roman soldiers is controlled by the Vatican under the United Nations, the way he governs on which countries we will war with. Now, they pretend like that they're not doing that. He pretends like he's the man of peace to bring about peace, but that's not true. He dictates what wars are to be fought and when. That's his Roman soldiers. The United States is the chief Roman military for the United Nations that is guided by the Vatican itself. And doesn't he talk about redistribution of wealth? Isn't that another thing that the Pope is doing? And is it not so that the U.S. dollar is near collapse? And of course, that's what it says. And why is it near collapse? Because of all the wars we're fighting around the world. All right? 
So thereafter shall be plenty of corn and wine and oil, but great dearness of money, so that the substance of gold and silver shall be given for corn, and there shall be great dearth. People are collecting gold and silver. I haven't been able to do that yet, but uh, I don't really personally think it'd do you any good. I think it's better just to buy yourself a little bit of food anyway, so you don't have to worry about having gold and silver. It's a lot cheaper anyhow. At that time shall be very great rising of the sea, so that no man shall tell news to any man. That sounds more like planet X coming to me. If the moon, when it got close to the earth, can cause the sea levels to go up like it did, imagine what it would be like when the ninth planet, as they call it, gets closer to the earth and causes our seas to rise. That the kings of the earth and the princes and the captains shall be troubled, and no man shall speak freely. Hmm. They are wanting to change freedom of speech. They're talking right now about getting rid of alternative news. It's going to become nothing but NATO or United Nations uh, approved media is what's going to happen. Gray hair shall be seen upon boys and the young shall not give place unto the aged. We're seeing that as far as the children today, they don't have respect for their parents. And that's something Yeshua said in the Gospels. After that shall arise another king, a crafty man, who shall hold rule for a short space, and whose days there shall be all manner of evils, even the death of the race of men from the east even unto Babylon. Now, could this be speaking about Barack Obama? Because Granted, there's been a lot of wars in the Middle East, and it's almost bringing about the annihilation of the Arabic people. What my concern is, though, is that President Trump, although he would want not to have a war with Russia, he's also wanting to war with Iran. Is this going to bring about annihilation of peoples? I don't know. And it doesn't have to be an American king either, by the way. It could be any king. It could be Putin for all that matters. I don't know who it's speaking of. But he says, And thereafter their death and famine and sword in the land of, of Canaan, even unto Rome, the word Rome is inserted there. They don't know if it actually says Rome. Then shall all the fountains of the waters and wells boil over and turn into blood. The heavens shall be moved, the stars shall fall upon the earth, and the sun shall be cut hath like the moon, and the moon shall not give her light. There shall be great signs and wonders in those days when Antichrist draweth near. That's what got my attention. When the Antichrist draweth near. In this regards here, I think that Pope Francis and all the consecutive popes to me, I've been the Antichrist spirit moving down as John spoke of it. But in this part here, Thomas speaks of another Antichrist that draws near. Is there something going on? Are they going to try to bring in a demonic spirit, an alien as it were, and make him the Christ that is coming? It wouldn't be hard for them to fake it. You know, this is one reason why I think all the chemtrails are going on. You know, in the chemtrails, this metallic uh, metals and stuff that is dispersed in the atmosphere. It would be very easy for them to take and, and do something to make it look like a Messiah is coming. And Or better yet, what if they're going to use CERN to open a portal or something of that nature there? You remember in the Bible when Jacob, when he goes, he's going to, uh, to get himself a wife, he stops in what is believed to believe, be, most people believe it was right where the temple stood, and he saw the ladder in heaven where the angels were ascending and descending. You know, some think that Jerusalem and the Temple Mount is an actual portal. But see, Jacob was seeing good angels. He wasn't seeing demonic, demonic beings. But I believe that with CERN, and also it's believed that to believe, excuse me, it is believed to be that this weather thing that America has up in Alaska is able to actually open wormholes, one dimension to another. And I'm very concerned that the Pope of Rome, working, of course, with other, as they call them, elites, are on a demonic mission. And they're going to try to bring in some kind of devil, as they call it, an alien, and say that this is Yeshua returning. 
Now let me share some other things with you. This article right here on your screen now, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but the link is in there below. It is in Russian. It is not in English. And I know that there is a, uh, there is a website called whatdoesitmean.com that is considered to be a satire news website. All right, and I have looked at that from time to time. Sometimes I see that it doesn't doesn't seem to really be real, and then there's other times that I, you know, they're right on on what they report on. But Novosti, uh, Real Nine Novosti, is a very respected Russian news website. It is not listed as a satire website, and they actually carried an article that was very similar to that of the one that was on what does it mean. And I want to share this with you because this is talking about when Kirill, the patriarch of uh, the, the Russian Orthodox Church, went to Antarctica. And keep in mind, we have a lot of people that have been going to Antarctica. We saw that John Kerry went there. John Kirby went with him. Uh, there was reports in Russian media that when he went to Antarctica, that he went there to meet with some kind of alien beings that are living there in the Antarctica. You know, I can't say if this is so or not. I have no way to be able to prove that or to verify it. I do know that we have documented evidence that, that, that uh, uh, Admiral Beer, Byrd actually fought a battle in the Antarctica after World War II, uh, took a severe beating on it. There's a lot of evidence that speaks about this. You know, it spoke about UFO type uh, objects that had laser type beams, all kinds of crazy things like this. I don't know. I don't know. I'm only going to share some things with you because in this case here, Real Nine Novosti is a very well respected Russian news site. You can look it up. It's not considered a satire site at all. Let me read to you what the article says here. The main religious leader of Russia made an ancient ritual in Antarctica over the mysterious Ark of Gabriel from Saudi Arabia. Now I did see where TASS Russian News, another well respected Russian news site, that spoke about that there was a special stopover of Russia's, um, um, it's a scientific voyage, that the, a ship that they used there that stopped in Saudi Arabia, ported and took on fuel and water and stuff like that before going to Antarctica. Now it doesn't say anything in TASS about them loading up this thing called the Ark of Gabriel, but on Novosti, uh, they did speak about this. Now let me just read to you what they say. According to the information portal, Real News, one of the strangest reports of the Ministry of Defense ever circulating in the Kremlin today, announced that the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church of Moscow, Patriarch, arrived in Antarctica earlier today where he joined the vast Sea Armada Federation transporting the Saudi mysterious Ark of Gabriel, entrusted Russian custodian of two holy mosques and spent an ancient ritual over the reading of the secret text given to him by Pope Francis in just a few days before in Cuba, where the leaders of the two major Christian sects we met for the first time in nearly 1,000 years. So they're going down to Saudi Arabia for some kind of demonic deal that they're doing, right? Now let me read on to you here. There's Kirill, right? You're on the beach with the penguins, you know. And like I said, it's not just been Kirill. There's been a lot of people going down there. You know, and he, like I said, when John Kerry went down there, they said that the guardians, as they called them, you know, it's, we might laugh at this, might ridicule it, but let me tell you something. Enoch speaks about the watchers. All right? That'd be pretty much the same thing. Demons. Okay? According to the report of the Ministry of Defense, Russia has begun to transport a mysterious Ark of Gabriel from Saudi Arabia to Antarctica. Remember in the news a little while back when they spoke about the stampede that killed, what was it, 4,000 people? Well, according to some Russian news sources there, it wasn't that 4,000 people were killed because of a stampede. When they discovered this thing through a, they were doing some digging in this area right there near where this you know, black stone is, whatever they call it there, the Mecca where they pray at, and some kind of magnetic pulse emitted from this ark there and killed these people, all right? Anyway, the Gabriel was first discovered in Mecca on the, on the September the 12th of 2015. A team of builders, diggers, and tunnel under the mosque, uh, Masayid al-Haram, 
uh, the Grand Mosque, and that when you tried to dig him, were killed. Massive plasma emissions subsequently murdered 17 more people. What is even worse, continues the report uh, on the September 24th, during the second attempt to unearth the mysterious Ark of Gabriel, another massive plasma emission claimed the lives of more than 4,000 people, but Saudi officials blamed all on the hustle. And, and you know, we know that's, that can't be true. Because the Saudis, they've been doing this thing in Mecca for, 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 for many, many, many years. They've never had an issue like this before. So something had to have been up. The original Department of Defense report on further action, the Saudi government tells us, after the catastrophic death toll caused by the second attempt by Saudi Arabia to get this mysterious device, a weapon, His Holiness Patriot Kirill contacted the emissaries of the Great Mosque on one of the oldest Islamic manuscripts, which is owned by the Russian Orthodox Church, and that was rescued from the Roman Catholic Crusaders in 1204 when they plundered the Church of the Holy Wisdom, now known as the uh, Hagia Sophia in Constantinople, now Istanbul, Turkey, entitled Instructions Gabriel to Muhammad. And I wonder why they're doing all these wars in the Middle East. These guys are trying, you know, let me tell you something. America is not just doing the wars for the Pope in the Middle East for no reason. They're trying to unearth more of the things that they have hidden there. But what I'm concerned about is more and more of it is demonic in the first place. All right. That's, I'm just giving you my take on it. All right. But watch what happens here. And I'm sorry I'm going through this whole thing here, but I just got to give you a little bit more information. So entitled Instructions Gabriel to Muhammad. It is important to note that the Catholic Crusaders... Uh, were not only against the people of the Islamic faith, but also against those who professed the Russian Orthodox faith, which is true. And there, and during the Crusades, the Russian Orthodox Church not only defended it, its own religious liberty from destruction, but also that that belonged to the Muslims. And this is one reason why you see such a close relationship with Russia uh, and the Arabic peoples, far closer than you see with the Catholic Church, because of them standing together. Now, I'm not going to go into the rest of the article here. Again, you can read this for yourself. I will read one part here down near the bottom. It says, although the exact nature of the negotiations between Patriot Creole and France remains a secret at a higher level, uh, the MO analysis in the report noted that the ancient secret manuscript was given to Patriot Creole. Pope Francis has to do with the Ark of Gabriel, a legend which says that it, was, that it, was, it is written directly to observers observers, the watchers that Enoch speaks about, the fallen angels, right? In a question in the book of Enoch, and just a few hours ago in the report, Patriarch Kirill, with the secret text given to him by Pope Francis, has made an ancient ritual of the Ark of Gabriel in Russian Orthodox Holy Trinity Church, the only church in Antarctica, and where he immediately then, a mysterious artifact, was transported deep into the vast cold continent swat. Uh, unit to a destination and for a purpose not specified in the report of the Ministry of Defense. Now, this isn't a satire, satire website, friends. It's not. Uh, I want to share with you something else here. I brought this out on Israeli News Live before. This is an interview uh, that was being done with Prime Minister Med, uh, Medvedev, uh, the Prime Minister of Russia. Uh, he's speaking with a, a girl who is a Russian uh, reporter. She thinks it's hysterical what he's talking about, but I want to just play this real quick. Just kind of, it's kind of to build up what's going on here, that it's not just a joke, guys. It's something that's really going on. And I know that the Pope of Rome, and of course, Kirill is involved in it as well, the Eastern Orthodox uh, uh, Church as well. And, and so it kind of lets you know that the elites of the world, they're all involved in this bringing back devils to be their, their Messiah, their Yeshua, their Jesus, their, which is, as Thomas says, when the Antichrist draws near. Watch what he says here. So anyway, he says, uh, actually, I don't have the sound on this. Sorry about that. But anyway, I, I, it's in Russian anyway, so I'll just read it. So he says, Mr. Prime Minister, you know everything. Aliens visited Earth, she asked. All right. And he answers back to her. He says, I tell you, the first and the last time, all right. Together with nuclear suitcase, President uh, bring, brought a folder, top secret, and it's entirely devoted to the strangers who visited our planet. All right. Now, he continues on. I just have to wait to change his face. And she's laughing at this point, thinking this is funny. He's not laughing. 
The report is provided by the Special Service, which handles the control of aliens in our country. Special Service. All right. After management term, two folders and a nuclear small suitcase are transferred to the new president. That's what he says. He continues on. You can receive more detailed information having watched the Chronicle documentary film in the same name. And she's laughing about it. Men in Black. All right. Now, this is not the movie in America, Men in Black. But it's funny, though, because the movie in America, Men in Black, they speak about that they are the ones that control the aliens on the planet. But it's just a comical fiction film. This man's not cracking a joke. You have to remember, too, recently Vladimir Putin has said to President Barack Obama, either you need, you're going to tell them about the aliens that have visited this earth or I'm going to do it. You have a choice. Uh, so there's some kind of big thing going on about this, and nobody's letting anybody know nothing, right? But watch what he says here. Reporter, oh, you, how many? She thinks it's a joke, all right? He says, how many of them among us? I can't tell because the panic will begin. You know, I know people that are sane people that I've never looked at as being crazy that have been through things like this. You know, I used to think, eh, it's probably just silly and stuff like that. But more and more as I'm seeing what Rome is up to, what this new world order is about, I believe that they're fixing to bring demons here to be the Messiah, to fake a millennial reign. Let me read to you some things here. 2 Corinthians 11:4. 4. For if, if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, okay, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. That's what scares me right there. The Pope of Rome sitting there telling you about baptizing aliens and then telling you that, you know, if it's something that seems unimaginable or unthinkable, that a, that a spirit would come like, like the way they're saying it, he's preparing the people. He's conditioning the Catholics' minds. He's trying to get the rest of the world to join in with him, all the religions in with him, to accept this new demonic, devil, alien, Antichrist. They're going to call it Jesus. They're going to say Jesus is coming back. Remember how in our own canon, you know, it speaks about that when Yeshua, when he goes up, he goes up in a light and he says, I will be re received up in a cloud. And he says, in like manner, I will return. They're going to fake something like that. But you know what? It may not be so much as a fake as a demonic spirit coming in. Okay. So, and even this thing about the trumpet sounding over Jerusalem and stuff like that, friends, I don't believe that that's God. I really do not believe that's God. Believe me, they can do a lot of things with harp. They're weather manipulator. And including making those sounds. That happens, by the way, all the time around the Arctic. Okay? Just so you're aware of that. Now, speaking of another gospel, six new beatitudes proposed by Pope Francis. This is on the Catholic Herald. This is not some satire website. This is a Catholic website. And they're saying this, that six new Beatitudes proposed by Pope Francis. The Pope has offered a new list of Beatitudes at a Catholic Mass in Malmo, Sweden, right? Blessed are those who remain faithful while enduring evils inflicted on them by others and forgive them from their heart. Hmm. Blessed are those who look into the eyes of the abandoned and marginalize and show them their closeness. Blessed are those who see God in every person and strive to make others also discover Him. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Allah for our God. Is that what you're trying to say, Pope Francis? It goes on. You can read them yourself. Uh, but there again, what is it? Another gospel. He just rewrites the whole Word of God. He doesn't care. You know, it doesn't matter to him. You know, but what's, what's interesting, remember this, what happened over in Georgia, where these little group of people that came together, came to these people that do uh, granite stones, and they erected this thing, it's called, what is it called, uh, I forget now, it's uh, the Georgia Guidestone, I believe is what it's called. This was this New World Order thing they put up, I think back in 1980, I don't remember for sure on the date, so forgive me if I'm wrong on that, 
But notice this New World Order. This is some of the this was some of the writings on there. Of course, it was in I think six or seven languages, maybe eight languages. They set it up like a clock, so when the sun shone through, it did did all kind of weird things, you know. Uh, anyway, it says maintain humanity under five hundred thousand in perpetual balance with nature. Okay, depopulation agenda. Now, some people say, well, the Pope is not for the New World Order when it comes to depopulation agenda. Wait a minute. You may not realize what the Pope's really for. Guide production wise, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity, uh, unite humanity with a living new language, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule inter internally. Resolve external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless. All right, well, that's interesting. Now, looking at these here, let me share with you some things that Pope Francis has stated. Pope Francis traveled to New York City to deliver a speech that kicked off the conference during which uh, the United Nations unveiled a new universal ag agenda for humanity. Well, doesn't that sound like the Georgia Guidestones there? That was in September 2015, July 2015. During a trip to Ecuador, Pope Francis spoke of the need for a new economic ecological world order hmm, in which the wealth of the planet is shared by everyone. Remember what we read over there in uh, uh, the Apocalypse of Thomas, that redistribution of wealth? See what he says? In which the wealth of the planet is shared by everyone. Huh, what do you know there? Uh, Pope Francis denounced global capitalism and refers to its excesses of the dung of the devil. In June 2015, Pope Francis called for a new global political authority. What does it say on the guidestone here? Let all nations rule, eternally resolve external disputes in a world court. Um, uh, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Hmm. By the way, Pope uh, Benedict had talked about the Catholic Church should run the world financial system. June 2014, for the first time in the history of Catholicism, Pope Francis authorized Islamic prayers and readings from the Quran at the Vatican. Well, there's your one world religion. By the way, this was taken from Charisma News on August 1st of 2016. It seems like Charisma News is still recognizing that Pope Francis isn't the best thing in the world for the Catholic Church. Now, I mentioned to you that the Pope of Rome uh, is made, you know, even though he doesn't believe in uh, uh, contraceptive, things like that, you know, at least for abstinence would be a good idea, right? Uh, but he is uh, very much, when I say abstinence is a good idea, please don't misunderstand me. In other words, what I'm saying is if you don't believe in contraceptive, you, know, you, you can be a little bit more humane and treat your wife as your friend as well. It doesn't have to be about, you know, I won't go there. So... She should be your friend. Let me put it that way. That should be the most important thing is your friend. And, uh, and, and then let love have its course as well. Uh, anyway, but anyway, Pope Francis appoints population control extremists to the Vatican Post, Brit, according to Britbart Magazine on June 17, 2015. A scientist who believes that the world is overpopulated by 6 billion people has been appointed by Pope Francis to the Pontifical Academy of Science. So... Don't worry, Pope Francis might say that, you know, go ahead and have all the kids you want, but he's got a guy in there that's going to make sure he calls off about six billion of you in the process. You know, you remember the famous part about Yeshua when he was uh, taken up by Satan and he was showed all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Remember what the Satan said to him? Let's look at this. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed him, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That's all the kingdoms that ever will be, right? And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give you and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Do you realize that Satan was promising Yeshua the ability to live and to govern all these kingdoms on the earth? That might make you think a little bit about demonic beings that might be in another dimension that have been trying to rule the affairs, demons inside of people, like in the elite class of this world, the popes of Rome, the archaic, as they are, the archbishops there. 
that are ruling this world by demonic forces. Yeshua would not accept it. Because Satan knew that once he died, his life would impart to those that would believe in him. And that's what he didn't want happening because Satan wanted to keep us enslaved, imprisoned in these human bodies where we cannot escape this demonic world. Let me share some more with you here. <clears throat> Guglielmo Miotti. Actually, I got a message from Guglielmo just the other day. Exclusive, a seat for the Pope at King David's tomb. Guglielmo Miotti, is, he's an author. He's an incredible author. He really stands for Israel. He's an Italian man. Uh, and as far as I know, Guglielmo is not even Jewish, but he really ma makes a strong stand for the Jewish people. <clears throat> but anyway, he says, a historic agreement has been drafted between Israel and the Vatican. Israeli authorities have granted the Pope an official seat in the room where the Last Supper is believed to have taken place on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, and where David and Solomon, Jewish kings of Judea, are considered by some researchers to also be buried. It is the culmination of a long campaign by the Catholic Church to regain religious stewardship over the place where Jesus is supposed to have broken bread and drunk wine with his disciples on the eve of his crucifixion. This is an enormous issue pushed through without any public debate. <clears throat> now remember, the Catholic Church has had its eyes on Jerusalem for a long, long time, and they're not going to give up on it. It is a place that they feel like it must be, and there's some things I'm going to share with you in a moment that will make it more understandable why this is going on, especially in light if they're trying to bring back an Antichrist, especially if that Antichrist is going to be an extra, extraterrestrial being, a devil himself coming down. And I have never thought about it like that. I looked at where John says there's many antichrists already, so I always knew that the popes are all antichrists in the first place. I've always believed Pope Francis is an antichrist. I believe that Pope Benedict was an antichrist. But there does come a day that there is one final leader coming that is supposed to try to mimic that of Jesus. <clears throat> now, let's move on. King David's tomb's room conquered by the church. I shared with you guys from the book of Obadiah, in, in verse 16, the uh, Bible's too far away for me to reach right now, where he speaks about that they would drink upon my holy mountain. And it's in the masculine plural. It was men only. When the Pope came back in, uh, d during the um, uh, Passover, actually it was, uh, they did it on the Easter Sunday of 2014, the Pope of Rome held a mass in the upper room above King David's tomb with men only. The very next day on Monday, I believe it was, yes, Monday morning, they came in again. This time it wasn't Pope Francis, but all the nations were there. As the Bible says, and all the nations will continually drink upon this, the holy mountain, which was Mount Zion, and they shall swallow down. God is bringing judgment on Esau for doing this. And by the way, he does say it's Esau that does this, which is the modern day Romans. As we find out according to Daniel chapter 9, where he says it was the... Uh, Romans that would destroy the temple and the sanctuary in 70 AD. That's how we know that Rome is associated with Esau. But anyway, so they took and they came into King David's tomb, filmed on Sunday. It now turns out that Mass was held again on Monday morning, this time in the very room where King David's tomb is said to be located. The rabbinate Yehokaved uh, Grossman, a lead activist for King David's tomb, reported to Arut Shiva that the numerous priests and monks held a Mass service in the room of King David's grave marker. They're fulfilling biblical prophecy to the letter, but God shows in every case it's demonic what they're doing. And, all right, I've got, I've got to do it. I've got to pull it out for you guys. You know, um, Obadiah right here. All right. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the nations drink continually. When it says you have drunk, it, it sounds in English like a singular, just like one person comes and drinks upon the holy mountain, but it's not. It's in the masculine plural. In fact, ever since I did the video on this originally and sent it to Rabbi uh, Tovia Singer, he started speaking the same thing to the Jewish people as well, minus the part about Yeshua being the Messiah, that is. Uh, but anyway, they've drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the nations drink continually. Indeed, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, 
So on that same mountain where the Pope and all of the different, uh, when it says all the nations, it's talking about all the different denominations. So the Greek Orthodox, the Roman Catholics, men, women, in fact, it's gender inclusive after the first time they drink upon the holy mountain. And it's been gender inclusive that they continue to do these uh, communion services. No, no more in the tomb of David, but even in the upper room, they've continued to do them over the time, over the course of time. But they have defaced God's property there. And so God is going to bring deliverance. And this is where I believe the two witnesses actually begin their ministry is on Mount Zion. And that's why the Pope is trying to do this. He thinks that he's doing the right thing. He thinks he's bringing about the, the coming of the Messiah, but he's bringing about a demonic spirit instead. All right. Now, let me take you to Joel Bainerman. Joel Bainerman, the late Joel Bainerman, he has passed away. So has uh, the late Barry Chamish. I love Barry very much. Barry very, very uh, opened up a lot of people's eyes to what, what Rome was doing and even what some of the evil Zionists, not, and I don't say Zionism, Zionism for the sake of the Jewish people to return home to see the Messiah is not evil. But the political side of Zionism, where it's backed by the Roman Catholic Church to conquer lands and kill people just to do it for the sake of saying they can do it, that's demonic. And I don't agree with that at all. All right? I believe that we have a right to defend ourselves. I do agree with that. But not in the way that some of these evil things have happened. Anyway, Joel Bainerman says, Most Israelis have probably never thought very much about what the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, thinks about end-of-days theology. Jews themselves don't give much thought of what will happen when Gog and Magog takes place. Jews don't go in for anything less, uh, uh, anything the le least bit next world, but instead firmly planted in the here and now. And that's good. That's what they do. That's what he says. However, it doesn't matter what Jews think. What is matters is what the Vatican believes. And this is what he goes into this article. He states, and while it believes this, Judaism is modern Jewish thought pretty much just dismisses the basic tenets of Catholicism outright and doesn't even bother addressing the core question of what is behind Catholic theological claims. So he asks the question, what does the Vatican want? It can't be that the Vatican is only interested in access of the holy sites in Jerusalem. They already have that as well as legal jurisdiction under the Israeli law for their institutions and assets in Jerusalem. Also, when these holy sites were under jurisdiction of the Jordanians from 1948 to 67, no pope demanded the internationalization of Jerusalem. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to internationalize Jerusalem. Okay? It is something else which the Vatican wants. The Roman Catholic Church needs to have certain versions of the events to, to be played out for them to stand in front of mankind and proclaim our Messiah has returned. And of course to the Jews this Messiah will be false as the first one was supposed to be. Don't matter. This is the goal of the Vatican and this is what all Israelis need to worry about. And on that part there, I agree with him. I don't agree with him on the part about the first Messiah being false because I know he wasn't. But when it comes to the back, back to what the Vatican is doing, I do agree with him there because they're trying to bring about a Messiah, and I believe it's a demonic being. All right, now notice this also, United Nations Resolution 181. This is what was written by the United Nations back before Israel became a nation when they were going to fight for their independence. The resolution passed by the United Nations General Assembly in 1947 that called for the partition of Palestine into Arab and Jewish states with the city of Jerusalem as a corpus separatum. Latin separate entity, like Washington, D.C., like um, England, Great Britain right there, that little city within a city there, like also uh, the Vatican City separate entity. It would be the fourth separate entity that is in the world today, right? So they called for that, which was considered by Jewish community in Palestine to be legal basis for the establishment of Israel, and which was rejected by the Arab community, was succeeded almost immediately by violence but it's going to pass. That's why you see all the infrastructure in Israel changing. Now, let's go back and look at some of this from the biblical standpoint. We're getting very close to the closing of this message, and I know it's been long, and I apologize. I thank you for bearing with me, though. Rome, this is what they're going to do, all right? This is what their plans are. In Revelation 2.26, And he that overcometh keepeth my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of the potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. Now the Pope of Rome wants to mimic 
what Yeshua states here in the book of Revelation through John the writer there. He's wanting to bring about that one that will rule with a rod of iron. And of course, he's not looking at it from a shepherding standpoint, which the word shall rule comes from. The word rule there, it should even be said rule, shall shepherd them, is what it should say. That's what the word is in, in the Greek language. Shall shepherd them with a rod of iron. All right, but nonetheless, he's looking at doing that. He wants to fake a millennial reign. He's got to get there in Jerusalem. So he's going to allow some kind of Arab attack on Vatican City. Something's going to happen, no doubt. And then he's going to move his headquarters to Jerusalem, where the United Nations will take over Jerusalem, as Micah prophesied about in chapter 4, where he says the Jews, even though they've returned to Zion, they're going to be thrown out of Zion and dwell in the fields, right? That's what's going to happen. But notice what Daniel says. This is what caught my attention. I totally, I have had all kinds of ideas about what Daniel means in the, in the, the image there, in the, in the legs and the feet there. But now I know what it is. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. Remember, Revelations 2, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. The Vatican has always been represented as the iron to begin with because they are the Babylonian Empire that has existed from the former Babylonian empires out in the Middle East. They're just, they're mystery Babylon, right? And they're part of Daniel's legs that are made out of iron. Okay, and it also mentions the clay there. Notice over here, with a, the, the, in Revelation uh, 2.27, he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. So he's intending on breaking up the people with his rod of iron that he's going to rule by. But you've got to remember, Daniel's vision, there's this, hand, this, this, this image without, or this, this one without hands takes that stone and busts the feet into pieces. He destroys what's going on. Now watch what happens here. And as the toes and the feet were part of iron and part of clay, the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. You know what that is? I used to think that maybe the clay represented the Muslims because they bow on a clay tablet or they bow their head to the earth. No. Iron is the Roman Catholicism that's in the world today. The clay, the broken part, is the fact the clay represents the human beings. It represents the Christians that broke away from the Catholic Church. And they're all throughout the world, but they're all kind of denominational systems as well. So they're broken. See, the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever." So God has got to break up all these systems. He's going to break up Rome. He's going to break up all the denominational creeds. That's why your two witnesses, it says two witnesses, not two Baptists, not two Methodists, not two Presbyterians. See, so, but you're intermingled in there. And we know now that we're at the time of the toes where the clay and the iron is intermingled. Why? Because people like, like, uh, 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 Oh, what's his name there? Kenneth Copeland. Uh, you, you have Rick Warren. You have all these guys that have gone, taken the churches back in, and they've mingled themselves, and they twisted themselves into the feet of Daniel's vision where the iron and the clay is mixed together. But it doesn't hold well because the clay doesn't hold with iron. Okay? But it's all got to be broken up. The thing is, though, the Pope of Rome is going to try to do it. And he's going to try to bring in a false messiah to rule with that rod of iron. And I think that when you see Nibiru and this idea here, this may be what's going to cause the, the seas to rise like unbelievable according to the prophecy of the Apocalypse of Thomas, if it's correct. I can't say that it is. I just think it's interesting. Uh, you have CERN. And as you can see by this photograph here, you know, it's like they're trying to go into another dimension, another world. Remember, don't forget, there are what? How many demons are bound? There's four angels in the river Euphrates, right? Saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. 
And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army and the horsemen were 200,000 and thousand. And, and I heard the number of them. You know, they're going, they're going to try to do a population reduction just like they're doing now. Look at all the wars that the Roman soldiers are fighting, fighting in the Middle East. They got brother fighting against brother, killing each other. That sounds like another Jesuit-inspired civil war like we had in America. The Jesuits caused the civil war in America, and then they killed Abraham Lincoln on top of it, and now they're trying to bash in his character. Abraham Lincoln said that the Jesuits one day would cut his throat from ear to ear and would ravish his wife. Well, they didn't do it that way. They just put a bullet to the back of his head, but he was right. One of the few good presidents that America ever had. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. I know this was long. Thank you. And thank you for those of you that stand with this ministry and support this ministry. Immediately after this broadcast, I will be speaking with a dear friend that can help us get issues resolved with our website and things uh, that are going on. So if you're having trouble being able to, uh, to donate to help this ministry, we should have these things fixed here very shortly. Uh, those that are able to, to, to give anyway, we thank you very kindly. And I've got tons of letters I need to respond to uh, because mainly it's been over, you know, weeks and stuff that people have sent. And I just have not had a chance to get back to it. But I do read the letters and we will be responding very soon. And thank you for your patience. Uh, I also want to thank, there was a sister uh, from Florida that sent me a little coin there. And uh, she knows I like coins and I, I just thank her for that. And I got just in just recently, someone sent me an old, uh, old picture book of Jerusalem, very old book uh, that was just such a blessing. God bless you. Thank you for that. Thank you for your love and kindness. We do appreciate it greatly. Shalom.